All right, everyone, thank you for joining. Uh, we're going to start from where we left in the last class. We said we're going to start from user input. Okay, if you have any question anytime, please let me know right away. Uh, don't wait for the last minute. So, <clears throat> user inputs are uh, giving the users who run your program the privileges or options to give some input when they run program. Uh, the function that allows the user to give input is called input. As you can see on the screen, it's a function because it has a name and then there is an opening um, parenthesis and a closing parenthesis. These two parentheses and the name defines a function. So input is a function. We can use this function to get input from user. Let's go back to, um, we can use visualizer. This time I'm gonna use Replit. And to start with Replit, you can uh, go to the page, you can log in with your Gmail account. And then in the create area, you just click on create and then choose Python and put a name, okay? And then create Replit. <coughs> Uh, that's simple. When you do that, you will get something like this and it will open. So this is the last time I used it and I simply open that option. Now, the input to get user input, we have to use the function input and a function has a name and a parenthesis. <laughs> this uh, causes the system to wait for the user to give some input. Let's take a look before we take an input. Let's take a look at, let's say we have a variable x equals five, and then we wanna say print <coughs> x. Very simple, okay? Without any input. What happens if I run this without input? If I run this, it simply print five, and then the program ends, okay? Now I'm gonna use input and I'm gonna use this input before print x, okay? So let's see uh, what happens here. <clears throat> I run and look, it did not print x. It's waiting for something, okay? It's waiting for something. It did not print x. So it's actually waiting at this place. It's waiting for user input. If I type anything, doesn't matter what, and we don't have, uh, we don't know what the, what the program is asking. So I'm, I'm just gonna type anything on the keyboard and press enter. And then it did print X, which was five. Now, when it, a, a user waits in the blank screen, the user doesn't know what to do. So we need to put some message to the user in the input. For example, enter your name, <clears throat> okay? If we put this message and then run again, it did initialize x equals 5 and then it giving a user message enter your name and then if i type a name <clears throat> and then it goes to the next line and print x okay so it did wait for the user to type something on the keyboard now what i typed in <laughs> on the keyboard i did not hold it in any way okay it did go away i could not use it so let's put, uh, let's modify this code and take this input in a variable. To take this input in a variable, I will use something like name, uh, a variable name, and then equal input. So whatever the user will type in, in here, that input will go into name variable, right? So let's run again. It did go into name variable, but I didn't really use the name variable in my program, right? So I should use the, uh, there is a reason that user will give input and we will ask user to give input so that I can use that information in my program. So I'm gonna use that name uh, that the user typed in, user, whatever the user typed in that goes in the name variable. So I'm gonna say, um, you, Okay, let's say welcome and then let's say name. Let's try this. <coughs> so, 
will come in okay so um, here uh, there is a plus sign and we did um, use this plus sign before what is going to happen what is uh, going to happen is it's going to print this string okay which is welcome and then it will also concatenate or merge the value of name and the value of name is coming from the user who runs this program whatever i type in that goes in name variable and then when i use that name variable in an expression then it uses the value of a variable if i use a variable on the right side of an equal sign then uh, then it uses the value or when i use a variable name in an expression like this then it uses the value of the variable if i use the variable on a left side of equal sign then it changes the value of the variable right as you remember so whatever the user is giving as input on this line that value will go into name variable the name variable value will change and then since this name variable is not on the left side of an equal sign so the value of the variable will come in here so let's run again and now it's saying welcome alex right <coughs> whatever i type in that value goes in here so i could take input with the input command and then i could i, I did save it in the name variable here x is really useless uh, I, i'm not using in here um, let me increase the size so that you can see it better okay so uh, i'm getting an input from the user i'm putting in a name variable and then i am using that name variable in the print statement i merged two string this print is a function okay uh, again print and then an opening uh, parenthesis and closing parenthesis that makes a function and inside the parenthesis i can use different things um, whatever i use here i can use constant string i can use number i can use variable if I use variable, then it value is used at that place. And when you have two strings, since name is a string, I typed in a string. A string is like text, right? Since I typed in a text, the text go into name variable. And then this value, okay, and the welcome space, these two values are merged together or concatenated with the plus sign. When you have two strings that you, and you use a plus sign, they are they get merged. They are combined together. Okay, <coughs> and if I run again, I give a different value, and it's using that input going into the variable, and then I'm using that variable in here. All right. <coughs> now, um, I did the same thing input it says what, what uh, who are you and then the user type in when when the user runs and, and it, the the program waits for the user input right so you don't need to type in something on the keyboard and that that is expected to be a name and then that value goes into an am variable and then it says welcome now look there is no space here you simply used welcome and uh, if I remove this space, it looks a little weird. Okay, let's take a look. And let's see. See, there is no space, right? So here you need an extra space because the name is not going to take any extra space. Okay, so you have to use that extra space in, in here. Sometimes we can use additional space. Um, let's say I want to use. Uh, it's simply a space in a quotation mark so after welcome it's going to merge a space and then it's going to merge also the variable value that is getting from user input okay so even though there is no space here i added one extra space i could add one extra space here too anyway so we're getting input now if I change this program, let's say enter a number, <clears throat> okay, and I, I have used one extra space here also so that it looks better, okay. 
So it's prompting and saying enter a number. And I'm not going to say welcome number, I'm going to say something else. So let's say uh, I will put a variable name number one. Okay. And then I will say uh, you entered. and then plus <coughs> number one right number one what do you think is going to happen if i <coughs> run and i type in 20 what would be the output anyone can guess what would be the output can anyone you enter 20 that is what expected okay and let's see what happens if I press enter and you say you entered 20 <coughs> um, this is a, a compiler it's using from here let's use it in a different compiler let's see copy here <coughs> and we execute online by online here uh, it's not showing that blank uh, black screen input but here enter a number on a different this is a different environment just a different environment so i'm gonna say 20 okay and then submit <coughs> and then next and it says you entered 20 right all right now Let's go back. Um, so <clears throat> we did take input. When we have um, input in Python 3, Python 2 has, has a different uh, approach, but Python 2, when we give any input, that input is treated as a string. Okay. We will um, use a few other examples let's say this one <clears throat> so we we'll get we'll get a number from a user and then let's say let's make it shorter and you m1 and and m1 Okay, and then I want to say, sorry, I want to say num2 equals num1 plus 5. <coughs> so whatever the user input is, if I in type in 20, then it's going to add 5 with it. And then it will put in number 2. Then I want to print number 2. Okay, let's run to number 20. Now it's showing an error. <coughs> it cannot add five with number. Okay. And the reason, let's see. What is the reason? And remember uh, a hash sign will will disable a code actually that will be ignored okay <laughs> let's see let's run this again and what is it saying i entered number and it is it is put into num1 and then i say type of num1 type actually gives the type of data if you remember we used a string type and we we use str for the string okay it, sh it shows str str is for the string we used uh, integer type which is the whole number like 100 uh, 3000 minus 20 0 all these whole numbers including negative numbers are integer okay and here you can see even though i entered 20 but it is treated and then i said what what is the type of number one that means it's the data type data types are integer float float has decimal points like 3.7 
and then we have a string that goes in the quotation mark so that is the string okay and we um, it is uh, it is a string the full word but uh, str represents a string and also there is boolean which gives you true or false um, result now this type function tells exactly what is the type of the data in the variable okay so the type is saying that it is a string and now think logically if i say number two equals number one plus five what it's doing is it's trying to add since it's a string it's trying to add this 20 plus five which is which doesn't make sense right it cannot add a string so there is a difference between 20 and and 20. these two uh, these two values this one is a number and this one is a string because it is in quotation mark okay so the number that i typed in that was taken as a string and then uh, how do i know that if i if I use the type function, then it gives the uh, data type. For example, for another example, let's say x equals 10 and I am using, I'm going to use the same here and say, what is the type of x? Okay. And we'll see what is the type of x. Let's disable this code and run again. <coughs> this 20. And then it said uh, the type of number one is str, that means a string, and the type of x is int, which is integer. Okay, so when you say 20 and in quotation mark 20, they are two different things. This is a string, and this is not a string. Okay, now <coughs> um, we can convert from a string to number and number to a string. It's always possible to convert a number to a string simply by putting extra quotation mark, right? Uh, computer can do that. But computer can also convert number into, uh, sorry, a string into number, provided that it's convertible, okay? Provided that it's convertible, okay? So if I say, uh, <coughs> say, else can we convert this to number we can't right we can't convert this number to number it doesn't make sense but if i say 20 can we convert to this number yes because it looks like a number so it is convertible when it is convertible the number can be converted to a string and but uh, a number uh, can always be converted to a string but uh, if it's a string and it's convertible to number then it can be converted to a number so if i want to add the user input which is 20 to 5 uh, with, with that uh, i want to add 5 then first i have to convert that input into a number and how do i do that simply use the function uh, the it's, it's not really function you can say it's a, it's a uh, case converter okay uh, or data converter you can say int will convert anything that you put inside to integer number it will try to convert if it's possible okay so let's say uh, if i say number one then um, it will be able to convert to integer right <clears throat> if i put a number 20 then it will be able to convert to integer and then let's say I will put x equals just to make it simple. We can write code in many different ways. And let's see, let's run now. Now we didn't print anything. Okay, that's why it didn't show anything uh, anyway. And, and uh, this is not a statement. So let's print again. Number two. Uh, add it add it five let's say five with your number is just a message okay after adding five this is what i got <coughs> number two so if i 
type 20. Uh, oh, okay, here. I can't use here, it's actually plus, that's why. So I will explain it again, okay? Um, 20, and then add it five with your number is 25. Now, let's go back and try to see it again. User input, so I typed in 20, right? And then that 20 value was in number one variable. If I write this same code in, in visualizer, then maybe we'll see step by step what is happening. So let's go here and see a step by step what is happening uh, right here. And so enter a number, right? Enter, enter a number. So I put 20. And then you see num1 is a string. It's a double quote, right? It's in, in it's in quotation mark, so it's a string. Now I'm converting this number one, which is 20, a string into integer. So I'm using a, a converter, okay, which will convert whatever I put inside the inside the uh, uh, parenthesis to an integer number so it will become an integer number and then i will uh, store it in x variable so let's see let's execute next line and you see this is a string 20 and this is integer number 20 it doesn't have a quotation mark right so you see the difference when i convert it into integer so it's not uh, this string became integer number 20 now we have 20 number in x and I can add 5 with it and number 2 will become 25, right? So number 2 became 25. Now I say added 5 with the number is number 2. That's what my program did. I added 5, right, with the user input. So added 5 with the number is number 2. All right. Uh, did you guys understand what is happening here? I will explain that one of course in a print statement okay in a print statement if you have two strings then you can use add sign okay you can use add sign two string can be that add concatenate but since number two became a number it's not a string anymore right so you cannot use add sign but if I use number one look if I use number one it is going to concatenate, it is going to merge because number one is a string. But if I do that for, let's do it for, uh, not add it, you, your number, I'll say your number is this, number one, and then add it five to your number. If I try to use a plus sign with number two, which is already converted to a number, then a string plus a number it cannot be done right a string plus three no it, it cannot we, we cannot do it but when we have two string we can concatenate that right we can merge them together now let's run um and let's see what happens i expect an error here right i expect an error so let's run so number is 20 and your number is 20 it did say it it's so that means it came up to here right but then when i try to add added five with your number is number two which is already a number this number is a string right this number is a string because the input that we type in doesn't matter even though it looks like number all input are a string okay and that's why this number one as you saw in here also this number one is a string that's why it has a double quote <coughs> now when you have two string you can use a plus sign to concatenate them to merge them okay but you cannot merge a num a number with a string you can add two numbers you can merge two string but you cannot add a number with a string that's why this plus sign is not acceptable to to uh, merge these two okay so however print can uh, print multiple values 
okay and they can be of different type <coughs> multiple values okay so this what is what this is equivalent this line this one line is equivalent to <coughs> This one line is equivalent to using print statement twice. Okay. However, these two print statement will cause two different lines. This one print statement will print them both on the same line. Okay. So let's run and see. The number is 20. So that was num1 came here. This, even though it looks like uh, number it is actually a string okay and added five uh, number two now it simply it printed this text first okay it simply printed um, added five with the number is and then also printed number two which is 25 okay and then added five with the number is this is one line print and this is a different line print every print causes a new line okay that's why but these two are equivalent but the difference is that these two are in two different lines where where this one is on the same line it printed two different values with a comma okay <laughs> when i have two string i can use plus sign all right but if I have different type of data and I want to print them in the same line, I can print them with comma. Okay, let me give you a few more examples. Let's say, let's forget this one. Print. Okay, and then hello. I don't need a space here. And then what? Okay, it will print both of them side by side okay on the same line right and i can also do this and let's run so our focus is here hello and world when they are printed there is an extra space okay in between uh, in between items so this is the first item and this is the second item and there is an extra space in between items here when we add simply merge them they put the attach together okay there is no extra space they merge them and it's possible to add because both of them are a string like this one both of them are a string so you could add but when this big yeah Uh, this did not actually add it's just two different items print this and this This comma means two items. I can print more. I can print number three uh, Number one for example, I can print more. Okay, I can keep adding um, Hello world and So this is what is happening. I am printing one item two item three item four item by putting comma okay and i can mix up different data type here when we add it tries to either concatenate or mathematical add okay it has too many add this add sign has too many either concatenate if both of them are a string or it will do mathematical add if both of them are numbers okay but here in the print statement i am printing multiple items and these multiple items are separated with comma okay so if i don't put a comma what will happen it doesn't know what to do right either i have to put a comma or i have to put a plus sign what can i when can i put a plus sign if both of them the these two side by side both of them are a string then i can put a plus sign but since number two is not a string I cannot put a plus sign okay okay is it a little clear now 
Okay, so if I print this, it's going to print the first text, it's going to print the second number, it's going to print the first number, and it's going to also print the hello world. And these are simply four different items separated with comma. You see, the number is 25, here number 2, and then it's printed 20, and it printed hello world on the same line, okay? On the same line i am printing multiple items on the same line all right we have seen that we can concatenate or merge two strings by using plus we can print multiple items okay whether there are there, there can be of different types you can uh, a string and number if they are different types then we cannot use plus we, and if we want them on the same line, then we can use comma, okay? And there are different types. All right, let's go back. And um, as you have seen, I used this hash sign. And I think we talked about this a little bit in the previous. In, uh, hash makes a line uh, not readable to, to Python, <coughs> okay? So, it will simply ignore that line. <clears throat> uh, it will not execute, okay? Then why do we use it? Okay. Here, <clears throat> we keep not in the program and Python doesn't t treat that our regular English language uh, sentences as code. So I can write whatever I want, okay? So this program will show you how to take input and concatenate um, strings okay so there's this uh, if, if a program is like hundreds of lines program can be and you want sometimes you want to keep note uh, <clears throat> so that later when you when you try to understand uh, instead of reading line by line and trying to understand each line you can look at the note <clears throat> okay that is one one reason um, so that you know what, what you did uh, let's say six months ago or two years ago look back to your code and you can look at the note and uh, so it's called comment okay so you can look at the comment also if you leave an organization and you did write some program someone else is reading your program he can get benefited with these comments okay with this note um, sometimes this uh, program can be complicated and a simple note can help to understand in future okay so that's uh, anything that you put uh, any before any line if you put a hash sign so this line will be ignored it will not print this line if I run <clears throat> You see, it did your number is 20, and then it printed these two lines. It's this line is not okay. <clears throat> All right, so uh, if you want to temporarily disable the code, um, you are trying to solve something and you don't want to remove a code, but you want to temporarily disable so that you can. Uh, you can focus on something else and then we'll come back and fix it something is wrong in there we do temporarily disable line uh, a few lines and also another useful use is keep notes in your program All right. yes <clears throat> sure you want the same code oh this one this one is replit.com. Yeah, this one is replit.com. Here, it doesn't go line by line. Okay, it, it, it runs the program and only uh, keep executing uh, unless it, some user input is uh, needed uh, according to code. So, not really look i converted but original number one did not change i put the converted value in x i did not change number one 
Number one will change if number one is on, on the left side of an assignment. Then number one will change. They did convert temporarily in memory and we do, uh, and then um, in memory we didn't hold it but we hold it in X, converted value in X. So number one is still string. So this is a temporary conversion. But if I put this, look, if I change, if I actually change number one, uh, then number one is going to change to a number. It's not going to be a string anymore. Why? Uh, <clears throat> why do we convert number here? Yeah. Let's say we want to find uh, find the area of a triangle. Okay, this is the pro this is the, what the program is going to do. So what do we need to find the area of a triangle? We need uh, base input enter the base uh, enter the size of the base okay so the user will give base right and also we need height h equal <clears throat> enter the or simply make it simple enter height and enter base and then area what is area half right 0 0.5 times base times height right now this is mathematical operation we need number now but we know that when user entered, it is a string, right? When it is a string, it will not be able to multiply. Let's try to run, enter base, three, two, an error. Because it is not number, okay? <clears throat> and if we want to, we can also convert right here and then put into uh, B. So I can say integer right here, the, whatever the user input will be, okay, the user input will, will cause from this, this part. Input, this input function will prompt user input and then whatever the user input is, that goes inside this parenthesis, inside bracket. So when I put th this three, that goes int and then parenthesis three, okay? So this three will be converted to integer. Also, I can put here integer and the same. So this four will be, this four comes from this part input and up to this bracket. And then when, when I put this four, four is put right here. And then I am converting that to integer. So in int bracket four, that will convert h uh, that will convert 4 into integer 4 okay and then I get area h I will be able to do this math now and then I can say print area is <coughs> since a is a, a is a number which will be a, a floating point number so I'm gonna use comma not plus okay so if I run enter the base 3 4 and the area is 6 half times 3 times 4 so there is a use of uh, hash which is uh, common uh, so that's the end of chapter 2 we're gonna look into more about a string in chapter 4 uh, chapter 6 and you're not going to look everything about chapter 6. You're going to look um, uh, some of chapter 6 because uh, chapter 6 has some other uh, statement, Python statement that we have not learned yet. Uh, we have to learn them in chapter 3 and 4. Okay, but we have a string uh, in chapter 6, a lot of different other things that we can do with the string. Right. So let's see as you remember this is simply a prompt when we run 
uh, Python in in prompt in command prompt. Okay, so ignore uh, ignore this 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 indicates this is your statement. Okay, so we have two strings: str one hello and str two there, and we can use either double quote or single quote to represent a string. And then we can add a string. When we do add a string, the output and then print. Uh, we did add this to a string and put in Bob and then print Bob. So it shows hello there without any space. So simply hello and there they're put side by side, they're merged. Okay. Now when uh, we tried another thing here, we have a string 1, 2, 3, 123, uh, and that is put in str3 variable. So str3 variable has 123, 123 plus 1. Normally, we'll expect this will be 124, but it cannot add because 1 to 3 is a string. It's not number, okay? But if I remove this and make it a number, then we can add str3, which is 123 plus 1, okay? So, uh, <clears throat> we can merge to a string by using plus sign, okay? We cannot, we can, uh, that's also known as concatenate. We can add numbers by using same plus sign, but they have to be number. We can convert, <coughs> okay, uh, a, a string to a number, provided that the string is convertible, uh, the string is convertible to number. For example, one, two, three. This is not 123 when it's in quotation mark. This is one, two, three, a set of character, one, two, three. It is convertible to integer, 123 convertible. So to convert it, we can use int, okay? And <clears throat> then in bracket, we can put any value, uh, a string value, or you can put a float value, and that will convert it to an integer number. Then so this part becomes integer number, and then we can add with it. So uh, one to three converted to 123 plus one, and that goes into X, so 124. <clears throat> uh, again, taking input, enter. So uh, Chuck is the name, and that is put into name variable, and then print name that gives output Chuck. Enter. Uh, the user entered 100 that goes into Apple but remember this 100 is a string so when you try to subtract 10 from 100 it's, it's showing an error this is error message okay because Apple is a string 100 is a string a string minus 10 cannot be done 100 zero zero minus 10 cannot be done but if we make it 100 by using int <coughs> okay then we can subtract 10. So this int is called converter, okay? It is converter and um, now <clears throat> a string has multiple characters, right? Normally a string has multiple characters and um, also a string has position each character has a position okay and that is called index index okay the term is index so the position of uh, this is a string banana a word and b is in the first position position we say first position but when we say index <coughs> sorry when we say index index always starts with zero Okay, so the index of B is zero. And uh, then comes one, then comes two, three, four, and five. And we use this index to extract different characters from a string. Okay, to use, extract, and use different character characters of a string. Okay, that's how we can use um, index. Now, <clears throat> the, when I write the code, fruit equals banana, and then 
let's check this code uh, or I'll write it maybe in here fruit equal apple okay now remember we when we say index index starts with zero so the index of a is zero and how do we take a out of fruit we have to say fruit and then a square bracket in square bracket we have to put the index so if i say fruit zero that will indicate the letter a so let's say print it printed a if i print more <coughs> And next I'm gonna print one and next I'm gonna print um, two okay this three and I run it did print a p p and if I add one more next index four three a p p l right as you can see so uh, each letter of this string starts with index zero and we can pick up or extract each letter by using the name of the variable and then putting a square bracket and using the index all right <coughs> now if i say i'll remove this <coughs> how many uh, letters do we have one two three four five if I say five, what will happen? What should I get? What should it print? Should it print E? Since we have five five letters, will it print the last letter? What do you think? Will it print the last letter? We have five letters, right? this is index <coughs> no <coughs> let's see index 0 index 1 index 2 index 3 index 4 there is no index 5 and if i run this it's showing an error because index 5 does not exist in fruit variable okay so it's going to show an error so be careful <coughs> um, also, uh, so we can use this in many different ways, okay? Uh, okay. Another function is len. <coughs> len function, L-E-N, and we're not going to use index with it. Len applies to a string. Len of fruit. Okay. Let's, let, let's put it in a variable. And then let's see. X equals len of fruit. <coughs> this len is a function which gives the length of the string. How many characters. Okay. It doesn't consider index it's how many characters it doesn't length doesn't start with zero length does start with one if you have one character then one if you have five character then five since we have five character length of this foot which has apple right now will be five length of uh, string length of the string <coughs> space i'm using comma because this is a number okay okay length of the string is five now <coughs> uh, orange six so it's counting how many characters are there and giving me that length in x variable 
okay I could use uh, this thing right here instead of X okay length of foot I could use a like length of foot that will also give me six anyway <coughs> so a length function gives us the length of a string <coughs> okay now um, I want to use I want to use something that we have not learned yet while okay this while and see what is what it does index is simply a variable here doesn't matter what we call it okay <clears throat> as you know we can name anything uh, for a variable as long as it doesn't start with um, a number or a special characters except underscore so i'm going to call it simply x and i want to use x as index instead of uh, the word index to make it more not obvious index x and x <coughs> look at um, the indentation here while um, is a loop okay and what it does is if I put anything under while when you say under while that means with indented okay with some indentation that's under while when I say under while that means I'm putting indented okay now when I put anything under while that it, uh, it can be one line it can be multiple line when I put multiple lines indented all these three lines will execute multiple times and how many times depends on here okay <clears throat> how many times depends on this condition um let's say okay let's say for x um, let's try one for now <clears throat> so this is a condition and let's put it in another variable l equals length of foot and then let's say yeah i want to execute this in rather visualizer so that we can better understand what is happening okay so here we have a, a string and it is banana and then we have a variable x which started with zero and then we have the length of fruit which gives the length that means how many character one two three four five six so l will be six x will be zero l will be six and then it will check a condition this is less than sign is x less, less than l if this is true if this is uh, this condition is met or if this is true then it will execute these three lines okay and these three lines are indented there is some space at the beginning if this is not true then it will not execute these three lines none of them it will execute none of them and let's add one more uh, line finish <clears throat> and I will execute line by line and we'll look at the variable values okay uh, it did create a uh, fruit variable and the value is banana and then it created another x variable the value is x it will calculate the length of fruit variable which is expected to be 6 and put that 6 in L variable this is L okay not I or not 1 this is L so L variable has 6 it calculated the length of banana and then put that value in L 
Now, it's gonna, and this while is a loop statement, okay? Uh, it causes to look back, it causes to come back to this while line, okay? From where? From um, the end of indentation. So after this line, it will come back and look at the arrow where it goes. You will see where this arrow go. So it will go into the while loop. That means it will go to line number five if this is true. Only if this is true, it will go to line number five, six, and seven. It will keep going to line number five, six, or seven as long as this is true. Now, the question, this is x is zero, L is six. Is x less than L? Is zero less than six? Yes, right? Zero is less than six. So when I go next, the arrow will go on line number five. Okay, and then it will, uh, later is another variable. It will take <coughs> fruit and in the, in the square bracket, now I didn't use 0, 1, 2, 3, but I used a variable which has a value. What is the current value of x? 0. So that means I'm saying fruit 0 now. Instead of specifically typing 0, I used a variable here and the value of x will be used here unless a variable is in the left side of an equal sign. <coughs> if a variable, if you use a variable in an expression, it always uses the value, okay? For example, here, x is x less than L, it actually compared zero and six. Is the value of x is less than value of um, L? That's what the question asked. And then here it's saying fruit x, that means this fruit zero because x is currently zero, okay? So later it's gonna <coughs> take fruit 0 which is b, fruit 0 is b, first index and then it's going to print x which is 0 and the letter which is b. So let's execute next line. It did make letter and put b in there, okay, because fruit 0, x, fruit x means fruit 0 which is b. So it extracted that letter and put in in letter variable. Now letter variable has value b. Now print x and letter. x is 0 and letter is b. So it will print 0 and b. 0 and b. And look, it did go back. <coughs> it did go back. Not only that, x changed to x plus 1. Now x became 1. x was 0 and it was added 1 with it and changed its own value. So 0 plus 1, 1, x became 1. And it did go back. Actually, it also checked this condition, okay, which the error didn't indicate, but it did check this condition. <laughs> and now again, because this condition is true, that means 1 is less than 6, x is less than L. That, uh, actually, it's checking is 1 less than 6. Yes, it is true. So now it's going to take the next letter and uh, what it's going to do, it's going to take fruit x. What is fruit x? This was fruit 0 and the fruit x is a. Okay, that's fruit, fruit 1. Now it's taking fruit 1, which is a. And it will change the value of letter variable to fruit 1. Let's see. It did change the value a. Now it's going to print 1 and this a and it will go back look it, it did go back to while and it's checking again okay it's checking is x less than l is 2 it did increase the value of x is x less than l yes it's still true so go to next line take another letter increase x see keep ch is keep changing and and uh, this condition is is, is uh, going back and checking okay still uh, x is less than still x is less than l x increased to 5 still x is less than l now x increased to 6 now question is x less than l what do you think is x less than l 
no so when this condition will check and it will find that it is not true it will go out of the loop and out of the loop means out of this line which has indentation out of this line and watch this arrow okay where does it go you see it jumped here okay because this condition is not true anymore okay because this condition is not true anymore so it didn't go into the loop and also you saw that it did look back it did it, uh, go uh, back to the beginning of the while loop and did execute each line again again it did go back and check condition so while loop needs a condition to get out of the loop usually that condition is um, at the, uh, it starts with false so that the loop executes and then when we use variable the variable value is usually changed <laughs> either we could change x or l doesn't uh, matter it changing l doesn't make sense here but uh, we use a variable the variable value is usually changed and after some time this condition becomes false because of change of the variable value and then it goes out of the loop okay and <clears throat> Um, then it's going to execute this line and it will say finish. <clears throat> now, doesn't matter what input do we use here. Okay, so let's say, let's say, let's use an input. Input. Enter a food name. Okay. And now it's going to take input from me okay when I run it and it's not a fixed length that we call hard coded like banana whatever I uh, the user wants to give as input okay okay <clears throat> for example enter see it's cherry in fruit and the length is going to be different now length is oh, still 6 okay <clears throat> and it's gonna execute line by line right now uh, run again <clears throat> apple length is gonna be 5 this time checking condition is x this means it's comparing the value actually is zero less than five <coughs> yes so taking the first letter a increase the x value it will increase to one <coughs> and there is nothing else under the loop so it goes back check condition again extract the second letter p <coughs> print that letter increase the x value to 2 one more check condition again take the third letter print the third letter increase the value of x go back and keep going until the condition is false when it's false it comes to finish okay <clears throat> so um this was while loop we already we're gonna use more loops in another class but let's go back what else we have in uh for loop there is a uh, other way to extract letters okay we're gonna learn in future how to how to get each letter from a string <clears throat> this is another for loop um, focus is not here so this explaining how what does the for loop do it checks some condition if the condition is true then do something if the condition is not true so the arrow and then a condition check uh, if it's true go in one direction and comes back and loop comes back and look you see the arrow comes back and look if it's false go to another direction that's what a loop does now <clears throat> uh, this is slicing a string slicing a string allows you to get 
part of the string okay not just one character by one character but multiple character multiple sequential characters okay um, a slicing a string you use, still use the square bracket but use two numbers now with a colon in between okay two numbers and colon in between instead of one number when you say when you simply say zero it's going to take only the first character but if you say zero to four it's going to take the zero position zero index character up to three index character not including four index okay <coughs> excluding four index it will take up to three index so if you look at this monty python uh, this space is also a character and uh, index is five so zero to four it will go zero one two and three up to here not including four but we have to say zero to four we can extract from anywhere okay we can say uh, six to seven if we do say six to seven it's going to take this p and y uh, sorry not y seven is not included so it's going to take only the character at six position now how many uh, what is the last index here 11 if you say you you saw that if i if i do this it's going to give an error index 20 it's going to say index 20 it's an error okay it's invalid however if i say 6 to 20 it will start from 6, it will start taking from 6, so start from P, it will take, uh, it will uh, keep extracting each character and go until it can. Okay, it will not give you an error, but it will go until it can, that means it will go until the end. Even uh, uh, index 20 is not valid when you use it separately. Also, uh, Python uses a negative index. <coughs> this n is actually negative one, minus one. This is minus, this zero o is minus two. And this is minus three, minus four, minus five. Okay, you can use the negative index as well. Anyway, to get a slice of a string, you have to use a square bracket and then use two numbers. but you need to remember that index starts from zero but when you use slice the last number that you give is not included okay so if you say zero to five it's gonna take zero one two three and four not five <clears throat> if you skip one of these numbers one of these two numbers okay still you need to use the colon to get a slice <laughs> if you skip that it uses the default value which is zero so you skip the first number it will take automatically zero if you skip the second number it will take automatically the last index okay so it will take 11 if you skip both of them and put just a colon it will take the first and last Actually, it will take uh, 12, uh, which is not included, but it will take the last up to last character. So when you want to slice, um, part of it, usually this is not much useful um, without mentioning an index because you don't need to say index. You can simply say S, which is always the whole string. Okay, but uh, according to index, how index work? If you skip one of those, then it takes the default one. Okay, the first default is zero, and the last default is the one after the last character. <coughs> All right. Uh, concatenation we have seen. Uh, we can use two string. So this a is hello, and then plus there we can concatenate, and. Here it, uh, the concatenated value is put in B and then hello there is printed a space this is simply a space hello space there so the output is hello space there we have um, another <coughs> word which is called in okay there's a keyword 
this is like a condition <coughs> and it gives you true false result result n in fruit so it's like you are asking is n in fruit variable is the n character in fruit, fruit variable so fruit variable has banana value and it does has it does have n character right so the result is true is n character is, is in fruit variable m is not in fruit variable so the result is false is nan in fruit variable yes nan is in fruit variable so the result is true <coughs> this is similar to if we use this kind of uh, result when we use if statement if is a statement and after if we say if a is greater than b or if b is less than 20 something like that since this gives a true false value we can say if a in fruit that means if a is in fruit variable if a is in fruit variable true then print this if a is not in fruit variable for example this will not print found it if i say m sorry if i say m then it will say not found right it will it will not say found it but if i say n it will say found it <coughs> now if also has indentation and this line will execute only when this is true okay so if n in fruit means if n is in fruit okay all right uh i think we're gonna we have some other functions uh, we're gonna learn later maybe so the variable dot lower will make everything lowercase the variable uh, or the whatever it's a text even if it's text not just a variable the text dot lower will convert this into lowercase all lowercase character similarly we have many other uh, <coughs> lower here you have capitalize find replace stick but uh, we're not focusing those library okay so uh, we are we're focusing up to here using in and or well, we can also compare okay this is what uh, i also this is the last this will be the last item i promise okay so word is a variable it can have any value let's say word equal <coughs> apple okay now if word equal equal you see the two equal sign this is a comparison if it is equal one equal sign assigns one equal sign will make the word variable value to banana will change the value, will not compare. When you want to compare, you have to use two equal sign. And if word is equal banana, that means you are comparing this with this. If apple is equal banana, okay? So when you want to compare two string, you have to use two equal sign. When you want to compare two variable, you have to use two equal sign. If word is less than banana. Now, when you compare two strings, it actually is use uh, lowercase. It actually starts comparing one character by one word character. A and B. A and each character has actually a numeric value, equivalent numeric value. For example, A is 97. Okay, A is equivalent to 97. Anyway, <coughs> we're not going to go in there, but it compares A with B and A is smaller than B. As soon as, find, as, soon as it finds that a character is smaller, it says the whole word is smaller it's like dictionary dictionary is sorted like uh, indexed right it's sorted similarly it will compare this apple with banana and will say this will be true because a is smaller than b okay however if, if i say orange then of course also uppercase lowercase have different uh, value <laughs> let's not uh, complicate that and now we are comparing lowercase o with lowercase b o comes later so o is greater than b so it's going to say o this is going to be uh, true o is greater than b 
okay so this is going to be true and if it is true do this whatever that is we're not going to focus on there um so we had here i think i moved it a word so like this so <clears throat> when we had apple apple was smaller than b now orange is not smaller than b but orange is greater than b because o is greater than b if you have multiple character that matches for example b a n a let's say y it will keep comparing from the beginning b b equal a a equal n n equal a a equal and then y is greater than n y comes later so it's going to say word is bigger so this will be true right it doesn't uh, uh, compare the length or anything else it's compared one character by one character and we to compare equality we use double equal sign less than sign greater than sign okay uh, that's all for today okay we're gonna finish uh, today's session here take care everyone